This video was actually inspired by a tweet I made the other day about what do you do if there is no Zapier integration for an app that you want to automate with. Let's say for example, you come to the Zapier apps directory and the app you want just doesn't exist. I'm obviously just typing a random word, but it doesn't exist. What do we do? Oh no, we can't automate this app. But there are actually four opportunities that you could use in these situations when there isn't a direct Zapier integration with an app that I use when I work with clients and I go through these options to see if we can do something. To quickly give you a summary of what we're gonna talk about, three options are, and I'm doing these also actually in order of preference of the ones I like, and then there's a bonus one. What I first do if there is no Zappi integration for an app, I'll first think, is there webhooks available? I'll obviously explain all these topics. Then is there an API for the app? Thirdly, which I am not the biggest fan of, as I said in the, the tweet as well, is, I mean, does the app send any email notifications that we could process? And then the bonus one, which someone brought up in the tweet, which I really liked, and their name was Anna Burgess Yang. She recommended, she suggested, she said, if an app also writes directly to a Google Sheet, um, app has direct integration to Google Sheet, then we can obviously process Google Sheets in Zapier. So that was a great idea that I liked, that she suggested. I wanted to include that one because I actually I didn't think of that one in the moment and it's a great addition to add. I want to give all credit where credit is due. Now to actually go try these things out, because we're hoping we can achieve the solution with one of these approaches. Now we need to actually go through and see how we do that. When it comes to working these things out, when it comes to webhooks and APIs, what I do is I literally just come to Google and this is how I approach a lot of stuff when it comes to Zapier. If I was trying to find out if an app even has an integration with Zapier, I would say Zapier MailChimp. I'm just choosing a super easy option, for example. Zapier MailChimp, great, we have the integration there. In this case, we have the integration, but let's say there wasn't an integration. I would then go MailChimp webhooks and I would look to see if, okay, synchronize audience there with webhooks guide, webhooks documentation. Right now I'm like, great, awesome. They have proper documentation when it comes to webhooks. Or for example, Shopify, Shopify webhooks, because I've done this for a client before. For example, as well, like, okay, webhook, shopify.dev, great. Obviously, some of these things are a little bit more technical if you are a business owner yourself, but if you are an automation freelancer or someone who's in the tech space, you might understand these terminologies. And also some of these apps let you set up webhooks from inside the app. So obviously that's a great approach if there are webhooks available because this means we just need to listen for incoming data from this app. And Zapier has the ability to say, I want to give this app this link let them send all the information to me and we can process that in Zapier. That's the Zapier webhooks. So that's a great option if that's available. If a webhook is not available, then I'm like, okay, this is getting a little bit harder. Now I need to potentially go out and reach to that app to fetch data from them. And in that case, what I do is I literally just type Shopify API or MailChimp API and I'll see if there is an API even available. And in this case, there is. I'm not gonna go into super deep details, but obviously I'd go look at the API documentation. I would see how do you actually pull information from it? Do they need uh, various keys or authorizations or what type of data does it actually give me? Can we fetch what we need to fetch, et cetera, et cetera. I'm not gonna go into deep details there, but this is how I would search if there is an API that I can potentially then go fetch data from because there isn't a webhook and because there isn't a native integration with Zapier. The third approach, now we're getting further down the list of the things I don't like to do. If there isn't an API and there isn't webhooks and there isn't a native integration, then I start to think, okay, does this app send out anything? Is there anything we can tie into in some way? And in many cases, apps send email notifications. Sometimes they send summary emails, sometimes they send email notifications for the XA bookings, for example. There's a HubSpot video I'm gonna be putting out that I had to use the email notifications potentially there. And Zapier has a thing called email parser. So if an app sends emails for certain events that we are interested in, we can say, 
all those emails, forward them as well to this Zapier inbox, this inbox that Zapier gives us, and then Zapier can extract the information we want from that email. So that is an approach. It is a little bit fickle. It isn't as reliable as all these other options, which is why I put it further down the desirable list. But it is there if need be. As our fourth and final option for now, we have the suggestion from Anna Burgess Yang, where she suggested that if an app has a direct integration with Google Sheets, which many apps do these days, for example, just off the top of my head, a banking app like QuickBooks or Xero, I'm pretty, I'm not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure they have some native integration with Google Sheets because it makes sense. Accountants, people need to be able to export data to a Google Sheet and then do processing or whatever when they do bank reconciliation. I don't know accounting terms, but a lot of apps have these native integrations in the actual app built in with Google Sheets. So in the app, they might have an integration section of their own and you can connect to Google Sheets or something like that. And if we can do that, that could be a great opportunity as what Anna suggested here in that the app, they might write exactly what we need to a Google Sheet, say Stripe notifications, or like I was saying, new invoices in QuickBooks. And Zapier has a great integration with Google Sheets. So if we have the app write into a Google Sheet, then we can just have Zapier listen for new rows or new things happening in that Google Sheet. And then we can potentially process what we wanted to do. So that was a great suggestion from Anna. And if you want to follow her, I definitely recommend it. She's had some good ideas there. As a summary, these were four approaches that you can take if an app isn't supported by Zapier. It doesn't necessarily mean it's the end of the world, that there isn't any way to do this. But what I recommended in this video is four different approaches that we could take to still automate a given task, even if it's not supported by Zapier. And as I said, we are looking at, are there still ways that we can receive information from that app with a webhook? Are there, is there a way for us to then go fetch information from that application using their API if they don't actively send us information anywhere? Then thirdly, can we receive emails from them that we can process in Zapier using the Zapier email parser? Zapier email parser, forgot to write that down. And then again, there was a great suggestion from Anna who I follow on Twitter who suggested we can potentially monitor a Google Sheet which will have the events that we wanna watch for being written to it. And then we can process in Zapier. If you enjoyed these videos, I obviously appreciate a subscribe. It makes me know that people actually enjoy the content. If you are a business owner and you want help automating your business, that is what we do. And you can feel free to click the links in the description, reach out to me, and we can just have a conversation where I might potentially be able to help you achieve what you're trying to do. Or if you are an automation freelancer yourself or you want to become an automation freelancer yourself and you want to learn the skills that have helped me get to consistent three, four, five thousand dollar months online as an automation freelancer, then you can also reach out to me because I do some one-on-one -on -one mentoring and I can help you through that process or just give you some suggestions based on my journey and the things I do.